Attila, born around 406 AD, emerged as a powerful and enigmatic leader who would become one of history's most renowned figures. His early life remained shrouded in mystery, but what is known points to a youth immersed in the warrior culture of the Huns. The ethnic origins of the Huns, a nomadic tribe that emerged as a formidable force in Europe, are complex and somewhat ambiguous. The Xiongnu theory posits that the Huns were originally of Eastern Asiatic origin, stemming from the Xiongnu Confederation in what is now Mongolia and Northern China. As they migrated westward, the Huns likely became a more mixed group, absorbing other tribes and peoples into their ranks. This fusion of cultures and ethnicities has led to considerable uncertainty about their exact appearance and characteristics. However, it's believed that Attila and the elite members of the Hunnic society may have retained more of their Eastern Asiatic features, reflecting the continuity of their ancestral lineage. Throughout history, the Huns have often been portrayed as barbaric, a perception fueled by their aggressive military campaigns and the terror they instilled in their enemies. This image of the Huns was not solely a product of their actions on the battlefield but was also shaped by contemporary accounts that emphasized their seeming ruthlessness. One of the most influential descriptions of the Huns comes from the Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus, who depicted them as wild and ferocious. He wrote of their appearance and behavior in terms that emphasized their otherness, describing their facial features as savage, their language as guttural, and their way of life as uncivilized. Even their appearance and attire were portrayed as signs of their barbarity. Their clothing, often made of animal skins, and their practice of binding their children's heads to create a distinctive elongated skull shape, were seen as symbols of their savagery. The Huns were exceptional horsemen and skilled in mounted archery, an aspect of their way of life that would shape Attila's approach to warfare. The tactics employed by the Huns, such as tying objects to the tails of their horses to create dust storms, gave the impression of much larger armies and became a signature aspect of their psychological warfare. Attila's leadership during this period demonstrated not only his mastery of military strategy, but also his ability to manipulate both halves of the Roman Empire. The intriguing mixture of warrior prowess and diplomatic acumen would come to define his rule, setting the stage for a series of campaigns that would see him and his Hunnic warriors reach the gates of both the Eastern and Western Roman Empires. The first major incursion occurred in 441 AD when Attila began raiding Eastern Roman territories. It was a defining moment that signaled his intent to challenge the might of Rome and marked the beginning of a series of engagements that would shape Europe's history for decades to come. Attila's early reign was marked by an extraordinary ability to combine military prowess with shrewd diplomacy. The Treaty of Margus with the Eastern Roman Empire in 435 AD was a prime example of his cunning. By enforcing this treaty, Attila secured a hefty tribute from the Romans and a promise of trade, while also ensuring a level of peace along the Danube frontier. It was an arrangement that showcased his ability to engage with one of the world's most powerful empires on his terms. But this peace was short-lived. When the Romans failed to uphold their end of the treaty, Attila saw an opportunity. The raid into the Eastern Roman Empire in 441 AD was not merely a military expedition but a calculated move. The Huns, with their mastery over horseback warfare, swept into Eastern Roman territories, conquering and pillaging with efficiency. The Roman legions were unprepared for the speed and ferocity of the Hunnic cavalry, and cities fell one after the other. The use of psychological warfare, a hallmark of Hunnic strategy, played a crucial role in these successes. The dust storms created by their horses, the terror they struck in the hearts of their enemies, all contributed to their triumphs. The pinnacle of this campaign was the audacious but unsuccessful siege of Constantinople in 442 AD. Though ultimately repelled, the very act of threatening the Eastern Roman capital was a bold statement of intent. It sent shockwaves throughout the empire and further cemented Attila's reputation as a formidable enemy. Behind the scenes, Attila's rule was also marked by intrigue. His relationship with his brother and co-ruler, Blida, was complex. While they ruled together, their partnership was not without tension. In 445 AD, the mysterious death of Blida allowed Attila to become the sole ruler of the Huns. Some historians speculate that Attila may have had a hand in his brother's death, 
a theory that, if true, highlights the ruthlessness that lay beneath his leadership. In taking sole control, Attila's ambitions grew, and his focus shifted towards the rich lands of the Western Roman Empire. The stage was set for a series of campaigns that would not only challenge the might of Rome but also define the future of Europe. His subsequent invasion of the Balkans in 447 AD, where his forces rampaged through the region, was a prelude to what lay ahead. Attila's invasion was more than a military campaign, it was a strategic move that showcased his audacious ambition. The devastation his forces wrought upon the region was immense, with cities laid to waste and the countryside ravaged. But it was not mere destruction that drove Attila. He was a leader with an eye on the bigger picture. As you can imagine, this was a time of upheaval and transformation, and Attila was at the center, steering the course of history with his decisions. The Eastern Roman Empire was again forced to the negotiating table, leading to a second treaty in 447 AD. Attila's terms were even more demanding this time. The tribute was increased, and prisoners were to be returned. It was another diplomatic victory, one that reinforced his status as a leader who could bend even the mighty Roman Empire to his will. The Huns were not just conquerors. They were a force that commanded respect and fear in equal measure. But Attila's gaze was already turning westward. The Western Roman Empire, weakened by internal strife and external pressures, presented an enticing opportunity. His incursions into Western territories were not mere raids. They were the opening moves in a grander strategy. Attila was now eyeing the rich lands of Gaul, a region that promised wealth and glory. In preparation for his invasion of Gaul, Attila formed alliances with various Germanic tribes. These alliances were not forged merely out of shared interests. They were the result of Attila's shrewd diplomacy. He understood the dynamics of tribal politics, playing one tribe against the other, offering incentives, and using the promise of plunder to secure their loyalty. This ability to navigate the complex web of tribal allegiances was a hallmark of his leadership. As he moved into Gaul in 451 AD, his forces were a formidable combination of Hunnic warriors and allied Germanic tribes. The Roman general Aetius understood the threat Attila posed and formed a coalition of his own, uniting Roman forces with Visigothic and other barbarian allies. Flavius Aetius, a Roman general and statesman, was one of the last great military leaders of the Western Roman Empire. Called the last of the Romans, by some, Aetius played a crucial role in defending the empire from various barbarian invasions during the 5th century AD. The stage was set for a showdown that would resonate through history. The Battle of the Catalonian Plains was a clash of titans. It was not just a battle between armies. It was a contest of strategies, a test of wills. Attila, known for his aggressiveness, met an opponent who understood his tactics. Aetius was a seasoned general and the battle that unfolded was a brutal and closely fought affair. Both sides suffered heavy losses, and the outcome was far from clear. Though not a decisive defeat for Attila, it was a significant setback, a rare moment when the scourge of God found himself checked. The battle was a turning point, not just in Attila's campaign, but in the broader history of Europe. It marked a rare moment of unity among the various Roman and barbarian factions, a coalition brought together by the shared recognition of the threat Attila posed. The echoes of this battle would be felt long after the clash of swords had fallen silent, a testament to the profound impact Attila's campaigns had on the shaping of the European landscape. The Battle of the Catalonian Plains in 451 AD, though not a decisive defeat for Attila, marked a pause in his relentless campaign against the Western Roman Empire. It was a rare setback, a moment that hinted at the limits of even his formidable abilities. But Attila was not a leader easily deterred. Retreating from Gaul, he turned his attention towards Italy. The Italian peninsula, with its rich cities and storied history, presented a new opportunity for conquest and glory. In 452 AD, Attila launched his invasion of Italy, a campaign that would further solidify his place in history. The invasion of Italy was characterized by Attila's signature combination of military brilliance and psychological warfare. His forces swept through the northern regions, taking cities such as Aquileia, 
which was destroyed after a long and brutal siege. The destruction of Aquileia became a symbol of the terror that Attila's forces could inflict. The city's inhabitants were either slain or dispersed, and what was once a thriving urban center was reduced to ruins. The relentless advance of Attila's forces, the stories of entire populations being massacred or enslaved, and the leveling of once thriving urban centers contributed to a picture of the Huns as merciless conquerors. But it was not just the military conquest that set Attila apart. His interactions with the Western Roman Empire revealed his astute understanding of political dynamics. Among the most intriguing episodes of this period was his demand to marry Anuria, the sister of the Western Roman Emperor Valentinian III. This audacious proposal, coupled with his claim to half of the Western Roman Empire as a dowry, was both a political maneuver and a symbolic challenge to the might of Rome. The invasion of Italy reached a critical point when Attila's forces approached Rome. The city, though still a symbol of imperial grandeur, was not the invincible capital of old. Faced with the threat of the Huns, Pope Leo I took the extraordinary step of meeting Attila personally. Pope Leo, also known as Leo the Great, served as the Bishop of Rome from 440 to 461 AD and is recognized as one of the most important figures in the early Christian Church. Known for his writings and sermons, he greatly contributed to the development of Christian doctrine, particularly concerning the nature of Christ. His most famous act came in 452 AD when he met with Attila, persuading him to turn back his invasion of Italy. The meeting between the Pope and the Scourge of God has been shrouded in legend and myth. Some accounts attribute Attila's decision to withdraw to a divine vision, while others point to practical considerations such as disease and logistical challenges. Anyway, Pope Leo was later canonized as a saint and is still considered a doctor of the church. The withdrawal from Italy was not the end of Attila's ambitions. He remained a figure of immense influence, a leader whose decisions reverberated across the European landscape. His rule was not just about conquest, it was about reshaping the political dynamics of a continent in flux. Attila's relationship with the Eastern and Western Roman empires was multifaceted, marked by treaties, alliances, and conflicts. But even the most extraordinary of lives must come to an end. Attila's death in 453 AD, occurring on the very night of his wedding to a young bride, remains a perplexing and dramatic conclusion to the life of one of history's most fearsome and relentless conquerors. The night, filled with feasting and reverie, took a dark and unexpected turn when Attila was found dead in his bedchamber, his nose bleeding and a pool of blood around him. Some chroniclers of the time suggest that he may have suffered an intense nosebleed, possibly a hemorrhage, which could have been exacerbated by heavy drinking and merriment. Others, however, whisper of foul play, insinuating that political rivals or discontented subjects might have seen his marriage as an opportunity to assassinate the great leader, thus altering the course of history. The truth remains elusive and wrapped in mystery, leaving an unsettling void in understanding the final moments of a man whose decisions had shaped empires and terrified nations. Attila's sudden and inexplicable death not only marked the end of an era but also set in motion a series of events that would lead to the rapid disintegration of the Hunnic Empire, a once mighty realm that he had forged with his will, strength, and cunning. His sons, lacking their father's prowess and leadership, found themselves embroiled in internal conflicts and power struggles. This disarray presented an opportunity for their former subjects and enemies to rise against them. The subsequent defeat of the Huns in the Battle of Nideo in 454 AD by the Germanic tribes led to the rapid disintegration of the once mighty empire. The cohesive force that Attila had provided was gone, and the sprawling territories quickly fragmented, absorbed by various Germanic and Roman factions. The Hunnic Empire, which had once struck fear into the hearts of Europe, vanished as quickly as it had appeared, leaving behind a legacy of conquest, terror, and intrigue that continues to captivate historians and scholars to this day.